Hi, I'm Ramona Worst, and we have a treat for you today. We are at the Vogel Fruit Stand, and I have got with me Jamie Vogel, and I know this is a family-run business. Tell us a little bit about how you grew up in the business and uh, a little bit more about oh, your sure. history. Well, my parents started their first orchard in 1953, not the first orchard in this area. They got into it then. I'm the youngest in my family, and I grew up in this business. Enjoyed doing that. I was kind of ready to get away from it when I was in high school. I, but I always felt like if I was away from it for a while, I would uh, it would freshen up again, and, and I'd be ready to come back. We moved back here. My wife and I and our two kids moved back here in 1998 and took over the business for my family, for my parents. So you actually grew up in the in the business, and you had the chores of picking and everything oh, yeah, from the ground. Yeah. I actually there. have an accounting degree from A and M. I didn't get a horticulture degree, but as I say to a lot of people, I got my horticulture degree at the School of Hard Knocks. Yes. Up. Yeah, we we picked and pruned and thinned and plowed and chopped and did all those things when we were growing up as kids. Well, now I understand you're actually at Stonewall, not in Fredericksburg. So, is that well, it depends on how you want to look at it. We have a Stonewall phone number and a, and a Fredericksburg address. So we, we can say we have Fredericksburg peaches or Stonewall peaches, okay. whatever, but it's all the same. Okay, so now you come out of Fredericksburg and what is your exact location or address? So We're our 911 address here is 12862 US Highway 290 East, Fredericksburg. Let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about your wonderful preserves and all of your inside store stuff, and then we'll get out to the peaches. Oh sure, yeah. Well, we uh, we do a lot of different preserves. All the stuff that says Nelda's here. Nelda's my mother. And uh, she's actually in the back today peeling peaches for oh, preserves oh, yeah. with some other ladies. And uh, they, as I say, I, I told my mom last year that uh, I, I pay ladies to come gossip with her and, <laughs> and peel peaches while they're at it. So they're doing that today. But we have plum jelly, blackberry jelly. We do, uh, this is our uh, peach butter chipotle, which is a product that we started just a few years ago. Uh, much like our peach butter, except it has a little bit of spice in it as well. A lot of folks use it for putting on top of uh, cream cheese and uh, using it to baste and do different things like that. Of course, our, our mainstays are our peach preserves and peach butter, which is what they're working on in the back today. Right. I know every time we drive through town, we always have to stop and get some Nelda's peach butter. Yeah. yeah. It's delicious on toast. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. And a lot of other things as uh, well. Folks use that to, to baste and put in their ice cream, put in their waffles and pancakes actually in the batter to give it some flavor. So. And I know this is all homemade and I see that you also have ice cream and cobbler. And yeah, yeah we do. We make peach butter ice cream using the peach butter as flavoring and blackberry ice cream with the blackberry syrup that we uh, that we cook up. And uh, then we do uh, fresh peach cobblers and blackberry cobblers as well. Let's take a look at peeling the peaches. Oh sure, we can walk right okay. in the back here. and. Here's the lady who's got a peeling for peach preserves today, right, Mom? Yeah, uh, doing it for peach preserves, but we just got through putting uh, oh. cobblers in, fresh made cobblers. Oh. Wow, those are those delicious. Well, it makes the customers buy them because they smell them bacon. <laughs> Is there a secret to peeling peaches? It's kind of like picking peaches. There probably never will be a machine to do it right, and so you have to do it the old-fashioned way with a with a knife. And, and this lady is peeling, and this one is slicing them off of the seed for the peach preserves. We freeze it in buckets, and, and then when we have enough ready, we'll it will be cooked up. These small ones, we will just cut. If there's a bad spot on them, we get rid of that. And the rest of the peach, except the seed, we make peach butter out. Yes, I love your peach butter. Good. Good. And Mom, tell them the peach butter include. I mean, it's you'll take the pit out and the bad spots. Oh, yes. That's it. Yes. And otherwise, we leave the peeling on in the peach butter because they, it's ground up, so it's fine with the peeling. Well, I'm glad to see that you're just peeling the peaches. I went on the internet to find out how to peel a peach because this was taking me so long to do. And they say you blanch it and then you just slice a little X in it and then it just rolls off. That's if you're going to do six peaches. <laughs> but I always tell everybody, we're not standing over that lot of stone. And I mean, it could take forever. And what I found that it isn't any faster than this. By the time you cut the X, you blanch it, you're still having to peel it. 
so well, doesn't that tend to darken up the jelly a little bit? I think bit it too? darkens it, and you, you have to get the spots off anyway. Right, so I guess this is the this is where I'm going to continue to peel my peaches. <laughs> well, when we need an extra peeler, we'll call you. <laughs> oh, oh dear! <laughs> I wouldn't be as fast as these ladies are. Oh, it just takes practice. Yes, practice, practice, practice. Virginia, how many years have you been? Uh, like you worked down at Burke's Corner first. How many years were you there? Oh, so many years ago, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> About what year did you start? I started in 60 and in 1960 and in 1998 I went to Fredericksburg to work up there. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll let you ladies continue to peel and Thank oh, I can't wait for those cobblers to come out. <laughs> there you go. Hang around about 30 yeah, we'll minutes. Some fresh so now we're out at your orchards. These are beautiful trees and they've got lots of peaches on them. Now, when you first came here, which was when? I moved back here in 1998. Uh, of course, I grew up here with it. My wife and I and our two kids moved back here from College Station in 1998 and took over the farm then. And how many acres or how many trees do you think you have? The original orchard that my parents have, which is what we're standing in right now, has about 36 uh, acres. It's uh, around uh, 2,800 trees or so. I also have some other leased orchards nearby here. Now we have about 70 acres total, about 6,500 trees. I know that there are early peaches and then there are some that you pick later in Yeah, the we have about 20 varieties total and they stretch out throughout the season. We harvest them during different times of the season. Right now we have finished up several varieties, just starting some and there's some that are still green on the trees. They have a long way to go before they ripen. So now you say you have 20 different varieties? Yeah, yeah. It will, the first varieties will ripen usually mid-May or so, and then they overlap. We plant them intentionally mm -hmm. so that they overlap throughout the summer. Right now we have, I guess, about four different varieties that we're picking, some that are just starting, some that are on their way out. We have varieties that last up until mid to late August, depending on the season. Now I know you're famous for Freestone. Yeah, Freestones are the ones everybody prefers. They're usually the sweetest. Uh, they're the easiest to handle because they come off the seed. So if you're cutting them up for preserves and cobblers and that kind of thing, that those are preferred. Some of the early clingstones, though, have really, really good flavor. And this year they were especially good, mostly because early in the season we didn't have as much moisture. When you don't have as much rain, that's not as good for a lot of things, but it actually gives them a little bit more intense flavor because they're not as, not as much water in them. And then now, were you affected by frost in the past couple of years? Or? Yes, last year we had an almost entire wipeout uh, uh, from due to frosts in March, uh, hard freezes. You know, frost won't necessarily kill them, but this, these were two hard freezes. Out of about 6,500 trees, I picked 130 boxes total. Oh. Right now, we're picking over 130 boxes a day. Yeah, that was really disappointing. And a year like that is just no fun. The customers are disappointed. They want their peaches. We're disappointed. I mean, I eat peaches all summer long, so it's it's really not fun to, in years like that. And, and this year is such a relief because we have a good crop again. We have a little bit of frost damage in a few varieties. Not complete, but it thinned them out some. And we had a little bit of hail in April as well. It did a little damage, but, but not bad overall. So have drip irrigation. Yeah, not on these trees. These okay. are dry land here. Oh, okay. Some of our orchards, especially where it's a little bit more clay, we have some drip irrigation on those. That helps uh, during this drought we've been through. It really helps us to kind of keep the trees alive. But it's not a replacement for rainwater. Um, what we've had lately here has is, is just been wonderful, so everything is, is looking so much better. Notice that your peach trees, or well, all peach trees, they're really short and low. Yes. They don't just yes, keep intentionally. Growing. This, these are older trees here. These are about 15 years old, and so they'll we'll only have these for about probably two or three more seasons, and then we'll take them out. Usually, when they get to be 18 to 20 years old or so they'll start to break down. You can see a broken limb or two in mm -hmm. here, and that's what happens when they get a load of peaches on them. So eventually we take them out, uh, and then we'll usually try to leave the land laying out for a couple of years, plow it and plant it with some other crops, till that back in to re replenish the soil, and then we replant. And we have different blocks throughout the orchard. I have trees that we just planted in, in February of this year. I have some that are two years old, three years old, five years old, 10 years old. We never want to have all the same age because it, when they get to 
you know, that 15, 18, mm -hmm. 20 years old, when you take them out, we'd be without an orchard for a few years. Keep them pruned down because mm -hmm. we don't pick with ladders or platforms or anything like that. We want to be able to pick from the ground. And it's all by hand. There's no machine to pick these, especially for what we do retail. We're picking by color. And uh, we, you go through the tree, in and out of the tree, and sometimes you may have to climb up on some of the lower branches. You want to be able to pick most everything from the ground. The other thing is we try to spread them out like this in our pruning mm -hmm. so that uh, there will be good sunlight penetration like you can see in the middle of this tree here. And also good airflow through the tree so that in years when we're really wet and we have fungus problems, that helps to cut down on some of those, those issues. Now, do you pick your peaches? I noticed some of them were a little bit yellow and green. When do you pick them? Uh, when they're totally ripe or? No, you can't pick them totally soft because if you do that, uh, once you get them to the stand, and they'll start to really break down and then before folks can get them home, they'll be too ripe. What we try to do is pick them with good color, like this peach right here. And when you turn it over, you see that it kind of has some green here. Mm -hmm. So it's not really ready to pick. You want to find something that has some good red color or yellow color all the way around. Now, some varieties, like this variety gets pretty red. And even though some of these look like they're ready to pick, not necessarily so. Other varieties may have a real deep yellow background to them. And so it, it, it changes with the variety exactly how you pick them. But you're looking for a red or yellow or creamy type background, not a, you know, especially underneath the peach, not necessarily, uh, I mean, you don't want the real green uh, right. to it. So now to ripen them when you get them home, mm -hmm. what is the secret so they don't spoil or go soft? Yeah, with us picking them with good color like that, they're going to ripen fine once you get them home. You just don't want to refrigerate them until they are ripe. Mm -hmm. Take them home, put them in a paper bag, lay them out on your kitchen counter at, at room temperature. Uh, don't refrigerate them until they are soft. Now once they turn soft, then you can move them to the refrigerator and, and they'll keep several more days like that. And some varieties, some varieties have good shelf life. They may week, last a week or so maybe even 10 days. Others, uh, you know, they break down within a few days. You have to use them soon. Oh, in my house, they won't last that long. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Every time I'm walking by the yeah. counter and I see a peach, it's like, oh! Smell, oh. smell the smell. Oh, and, gosh, yeah, they're just beautiful. And these are just so perfect. Is there a lot of fertilizing that you have to do to keep them this nice? Or Yeah, we do do fertilizing in the spring and sometimes the fall as well. We'll use liquid or granular fertilizer. Mm -hmm. We also do, a, uh, we've changed some of our practices we do some things in the orchard. If you look down here on the ground, you'll see some of the prunings. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we pile those up in the middle and then we run shredders over them to, to break them down rather than just piling them and, and burning them like we used to do. That puts organic matter in the soil. You'll also see here in the middle of the row that last fall we planted uh, ryegrass and oats in the rows here. And then we continually mow that down throughout the year. Uh, rather than just plowing it up, and what that does, you see a lot of a lot of, uh, of, of grass and, and so forth here that we've mowed down, and that puts organic matter back into the soil as well. And, and especially in these old orchards, some of these old orchards were on third, fourth, fifth, or fifth generations of trees, and you always see in the first generation it does better than the second generation, which does better than the third generation because the soil begins to get depleted of mm -hmm. nutrients and so we're doing a lot of these things to keep the soil healthy so that we can continue to grow peaches in the soil. Plow it and you're not putting that organic matter back into there, you know, it just, it will lose its, its, its richness. And it's so sandy. It is sandy. Sandy soil is better for peaches. Well, ideally with peaches what you want to have is sandy loamy soil like we have here and then with a clay bottom. The sand can't be too deep or it doesn't hold the moisture up and the, and the nutrients will flush out through the soil. But if you have a clay base to it, and if we dug down here a little ways, maybe 18 inches or so, you'd find clay, and that holds the moisture and the nutrients up better. So, uh, you know, I've had some areas where we've tried to plant peach trees where it's real deep sand and it just doesn't work well at all. So now when your trees are, are older and you've pulled them up and you've let your land go for a couple of years, now where do you get your new trees? We order our trees from three different nurseries in Tennessee. 
actually. Uh, I, there is one nursery in, in Texas that we'll get some from as well. This, the varieties that are grown in the southeast that are propagated, these nurseries work well here as well. We'll order varieties that we're familiar with. Some of the varieties I mentioned before. Sometimes with certain varieties there will be different strains of them and some strains are better than the other. I had June Gold previously, actually right in this area of the orchard years ago. It was good but not a particularly good strain of June Gold. We have planted some new June Gold trees about five years ago and it is a really good strain. I want to make sure we get the same strain of it so I, we actually went through myself and our local horticulturist uh, yesterday and cut budwood off of the trees, the mm -hmm. fresh green growths that are on the trees. We packed that newspaper and ice and I sent it to the, one of the nurseries in Tennessee and they will take that budwood and graft it onto the rootstock, grow the trees up and send them back to me in January to plant. When you get your tree, about how big is a baby tree? The sizes we plant will be usually anywhere from 18 inches to 36 inches. And then how long does it take them to produce peaches? I've got some trees out here that we planted, let's see, it's 2014 now, we planted in 2013 and they'll have a few peaches on them. Usually by their third year they're producing pretty well. By about six or seven they're producing really well up until about 15, 16 years and then they'll start to decline. Do you have a problem with squirrels? Not so bad. I'll see some squirrels once in a while taking peaches. We have a little bit of problem with coons. Uh, you know, not, not real bad. I have sure. one orchard that's near the river uh -huh. uh, between here and Fredericksburg and it's six acres. It's by itself. It's got post oak trees all around uh -huh. and the coons are really bad there. We have to chase them out a lot. Worst problem with peaches, uh, if you don't keep them out, are the deer. They'll, in a dry year especially, they'll come in and uh, they'll knock the tree, you know, knock peaches off the trees and eat them, but they're really bad on the young trees. The little, small, one, two, three year old trees, they like to eat those tender leaves on them and they'll, they'll kill the trees. They'll okay. eat all the leaves off. So we have to keep them out with fences. Oh my gosh, I see another tree that's got a broken limb. Yeah, and that's, you know, but that's the peaches just are usual. wonderful. And they're fine, as long as the limb is still partly attached, those peaches will ripen up and we can pick them, but then we'll have to cut the limb off. And usually you can see where some new growth is coming out there mm -hmm. and uh, we'll cut the old stuff off and that new growth will come out and until we take the trees out they'll, it'll be able to produce some peaches. Now these peaches are so large. Actually, these are not particularly large. This variety we probably didn't thin enough um, and plus it was pretty dry and the soil doesn't do quite as well down here. And, so they're, you know, they're a little bit smaller. We'll see when we get back to our, our fruit market here in a little while, uh, some larger peaches. Oh man, I just love the way you can just reach into your peach tree. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, look at these peaches. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, this variety is, like I said, just starting to ripen, so you still see a lot of them that are not ready to pick. We'll pick on these trees for another eight to 10 days or so before, until they're done. So now I guess a freestone and a clean peach, that's not the variety, right? No, that's the classification uh, that tells you whether it will release the flesh from the pit. Uh -huh. And a freestone, you can cut it open, you can pull the, the, the flesh off of the pit very easily. With a clean stone, it clings to the pit. And then we have some that are in between, like Sentinel is a variety we're picking right now that's classified as a semi-free stone. When it's real ripe, it'll kind of cut away from the pit, mm -hmm. but it, it's a little stickier, sticks to the pit a little bit more than the free stones do. And we are starting some free, this is actually a free stone, one of our first free stone varieties that we're starting this week. See, I, I wasn't sure, being a novice with yeah. peaches, I would just hit Fredericksburg free stone. Yeah, well, <laughs> generally our, our early uh, season peaches in May and early June are cling stones. And we have a couple of semi free stones like the Sentinel that we have now. And then for the remainder of the season, there will be free stones. We do have one white peach now that we're picking. We'll get to see a few of those when we go back to the market. And it's one of our first free stones as well. It's a, a peach that my neighbor planted it about 10 years ago in his orchard. And he's really had some nice peaches out of there. So we've planted that variety as well. It's a fairly new variety. It's probably only 10 or 15 years old. It's something that folks have really taken a liking. We're starting free stones right now. This, uh, this variety here is a free stone that we'll start, we've picked once off of and we'll start picking Harvester, which is one of our really early favored freestone peaches. And then later on we get into Majestic, which is a good variety. And then really the peak of the season is considered late June through the end of July when we get the varieties like Loring, 
Red Globe, Dixieland, Rustin Red, and Redskin, which most people consider to be the best varieties of the season. Loring is my favorite, a variety I love. Uh, Dixieland is my wife's favorite, my mother's favorite as well. And then you will go through the season, and when does the season end? It depends on, you know, moisture and so forth. We generally, we have varieties that will generally carry us into mid-August, early to mid-August. Some years will go as late as late August. Yeah. So we've got a whole summer. Oh yeah, we got a whole summer peaches. for peaches. And I also know that in uh, Fredericksburg, they have a big peach jamboree. Is that what? No, it's in Stonewall is the oh, peach Stonewall. jamboree. Okay. Yeah. And that is uh, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend. This year, I believe it's the 20th and 21st. It's always the third Friday and Saturday of June. And, and then now Bailey, your daughter, is the Peach Queen. She is the Peach Queen. She was crowned Pe Stonewall Peach Queen last year. Uh, yeah, she's really enjoyed doing that and going to the parades. And, uh -huh. and uh, then her term will end. She'll crown the new queen this year uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh -huh. Well, wonderful. Let's go back to the fruit market okay, and great. see some peaches. Okay. So we pour the peaches in here. The guys are sorting through them, taking out any stuff that's real soft. Or if it has a, like a hail mark like that on it, we'll take it out and those go in the boxes of what we call number twos. And then the rest of them go through, they're washed. They're, uh, you can watch them as they roll through now. They're, the fuzz is brushed off of them, they're dried. Then it's sized on the other side out into the different bins and then of course we box them up. They go out front for sale. This is where they're being dried here on this rollers. Those are the large ones. Those are the large ones. And I can smell the peaches. So now it's my bug time. I get to pick and take some home. And take some this is considered an eighth bushel box. Although that's an eighth bushel level full, we really fill them up. Um, obviously, these are the number one peaches that we put up here. We will have number twos as well in the back. A lot of folks will come and buy number twos to use because they're cheaper. And because they're going to be cutting them up anyway, they cut the bad spots away and, and use the rest of the peaches. They'll use those for jellies and poppers and freezing and so forth. But uh, we have different sizes, uh, different size peaches and different size boxes. And you can kind of buy whatever corn you want. Most of these in these boxes will be firmer with some ripe ones that you can eat now and the rest you can leave to ripen up. Uh, but we also have some bags and boxes of some that are ripe right now. You know, they were picked soft and you can take home and start using right away. And of course we've got blackberries and plums and vegetables. Uh, those blackberries are all ours, off of our vines up at the house. Tell us about your hours. Oh, we are here in a good season like this. We're here every day from 8.30 to 6 at least. And some years when we don't have as many peaches, our hours may shorten a little bit. But uh, this is a year when you'll be able to come here every day for the rest of the summer and, and get peaches any day. And now you also said that you will notify people by email, and I suppose they can go to your website? Yeah, they can go to our website, which is globalorchard.com, B-O-G-E-L, and there's a button that they can hit on there to be added to our email distribution list. And also on the globalorchard.com, we keep updated every several days all the day with what varieties we have coming in right now so they can watch to see what's available. Plant the pumpkin plants fairly soon and then we'll have those in late September and all through October. And we have a picker on pumpkin patch right here as well. This has been wonderful. I'm Ramona Worst with Jamie Vogel and we are at the Vogel Orchards.